Hey guys, I'm here with Amber. She is the founder of Ivy Hill PR. And Amber works with small and medium-sized businesses in New England that are really looking for help with strategy that is pertaining to content marketing, public relations, video production, and all those other buzzwords that you hear around everywhere. So today I brought Amber in to talk about something that's really important, which is how do you stop the scroll? And we're talking about this constantly because content is key right now. So Amber's got a few tips and tricks for us to talk about how you can stop the scroll from a PR side. And I'm going to help talk a little bit about it from a photography standpoint. So I'm going to hand it over to Amber to give a little bit more of an intro about her. And let's start breaking down these walls. Thank you so much for having me. So my background, I am an educator. I have taught everybody from third graders to 72 year olds how to make video and produce media and tap into their creativity in ways that they can't imagine because they're running into roadblocks. And that really tied into a lot of the community work and activism I've done, which leads us to how do you stop the scroll? So I just want you to imagine right now, you are in front of a classroom having to teach a group of fourth graders, 20 of them, how to use a camera and take a photo, right? One of them has sensory issues. One of them has ADHD. The other two are fighting because one of them said something at the lockers. And the other one keeps trying to grab the gun, like the gum, uh, not the gun. <laughs> the other one I literally had, I had a kid who kept trying to grab the gum underneath the table to try and eat it. Like you have all this chaos happening around you. How do you stay focused on one thing at a time? So what can you do to get out of this noise and say, hey, here, hi, you know, like that is the point of public relations and public perception. So if you really think about that classroom scenario I just outlined with all those stressful things that you have to figure out, that's like your business. You know, that's like your brand. That's exactly what you're dealing with. Oh, I got to do bookkeeping. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Your audience is doing the same thing. Oh, I want to relax, but I also need to learn marketing tips, but I also need to feel motivated because I feel like crap because I can't do the marketing stuff on my own. And, oh, maybe I'll learn about crypto. Like, you know what I mean? You're just so torn. <laughs> and the perception is, well, why should I pay attention to you? You're just more noise, mm -hmm. right? So if you can stop people in a way that is meaningful rather than like, Sure, you can do like a trending dance video, but I don't know how many people actually want to dance all the time. I am one that is always very high camp <laughs> when it comes to things. I like using comedy and drama and things to really like, oh, I'm going to pay attention for a second. Something's mm -hmm. different here. I don't really get it, but I'm going to watch. And that's my tactic. But for a lot of people, the tactic is I want to be a space that is like respite for you where you can really come and you can learn something, you can feel calmer, you can feel supported. And that people respond to. So, you know, you're gonna get that through visuals and through the captions you use and how you engage in the comments and all those different things. And sooner or later, the wild, out of date, oh my gosh, blah, classroom that you got going on in your head, your business, on your feed, it starts to quiet down and it starts to get more focused. And even though there's like, that kid in the back that will be pulling the gum underneath. Oh, Tyler. Oh, I love him to death. He's a good kid now. But that one class, I will never forget. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to put a camera on a tripod. Why are you scraping the bottom of this table, kid? Oh, my God. So anyway, but that quiets down when you get really focused on what your story is, who you're trying to reach, and what the intersection of the two are. When you start figuring out what feels good to you and what you respond to and how it relates to your brand and your audience, you're set. Mm -hmm. But without that, if you're just like chasing after, oh, I like that Canva template. Oh, I like that photo that my competitor did. Let me replicate. Yeah. Journalists yeah. sniff through it, your audience sniffs through it, you know what I mean? And like, you know, definitely speak to that more <laughs> when it oh, comes yeah, to definitely. the visual side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think on that note, to go off one thing you were saying before is making sure that you're tapping into all of the different segments, right? But it's not just, oh, you have your photo and your captions and you're this and you're that, but it's also 
how do you utilize that before the post even is created? So when it comes to photography, I'm always telling people, like, you have the ability through your photography to activate both sides of the brain at one time. You have your left brain people and you have your right brain people, right? Right brain people. So utilize that. If you see the word dog, we're all going to picture something totally different. If you see a picture of a dog, you now know it's a big dog or a small dog. You know if it's in a yard or in a city. You know the breed, maybe the gender or whoever of the owner. You have so much more information. But you also have the word dog. So now you've got two different segments to tap into, which a lot of people don't think about. It's, cool, here's a photo. Oh, here's a caption. But if you take a step back and think, how do I use that photo to tap into both sides of the brain double in the audience that you can actually target, you're going to be far more successful if you can figure that part out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that just speaks to one of the bigger issues when it comes to everything relating to PR and what we're seeing in terms of what audiences want in the market going for it. I hate that. But there's some truth to it. People can smell you know like any sort of discrepancy like they're like nope I know you're being fake right there and there is a disconnect and you're not being you're not able to communicate effectively with me so why should I pay attention to you and when you approach things with that lens of accessibility and linking things together in ways that make sense that show your message I mean that like what you're saying all the time you see very different approaches to things like captions Mm -hmm. you know, and like even press releases, you know, how people interact with the press is very different than it was even, you know, four years ago. So, you know, there's different ways of approaching it. But I think to your point, having that you have the text, you have the audio, you have a visual, you have all these different ways that connect with different people. And back to my classroom from hell, you have to adapt to different learning styles, whether Mm -hmm. it's within yourself, depending on what tasks that you're more successful with within, you know, your business in general, and like other people you're working with, if you're trying to work with, you know, a professional creative, and you're having a hard time articulating the word in your head, like you're like, oh, I have this picture of a dog in my head, let me try and describe it to you. And you need to get it perfectly. You know, like, it's like, no, there needs to be that conversation about, well, it actually looks like my neighbor Roy's dog. Let me get Roy really quick, you know? (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no. So if we rounded this whole conversation out and you had to give people three tips to stop the scroll, what would those three tips be? Three tips. Show some confidence. Because people can really sense when you're nervous. So show some confidence. I would say the next tip, you absolutely want to be yourself and figure out a bit of a plan for how to show that. So, you know, the third component is always have a plan when you go into any sort of content creation, visuals, trying to reach out and message somebody. I'm really excited about this prospect. So I'm going to like, DM them four times and like all their pictures and da 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 da. And I'm going to put up a picture of like a product I bought from them. Have some intention. Let's uh-huh. think this out, you know? So I think that the plan and all of that ties together the rest of the other tips. But yeah. Awesome. What I would say. I love that. Especially the part about intention. I think that's huge. And I think everyone watching is going to definitely be able to take at least one of those tips and start taking action on it. So from there, I'm going to close this one out. If there's any way that you want to share for contact info, if people want to chat with you, I will leave that one up to you to kind of share that info. But other than that, thanks for joining me with this. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for having me. And if anybody is curious about what my team and I do, how it is operating a marketing and public relations firm in today's day and age, whatever, Ivy Hill PR. So you go to ivyhillpr.com or you can find us on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Sometimes we're over on Facebook, but yeah, you can find us. Awesome. Thank you so much. 
Thank you.